from the home of Buckingham Palace. It's the Tom Likas Show. I've suffered the tortures of the damned, sir. Tortures of the damned. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whack or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Right now, on our toll-free telephone number, you're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOP, 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio from London, England. And uh, just having a blast. It's like being on vacation and working at the same time. That's exactly what it's like. Just uh, boozing and cruising and eating like pigs and riding around on the uh, tube. It's just fantastic. I uh, wanted to give a chick a ride on the tube the other day. <laughs> she didn't need more. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for being a part of the program. We appreciate it. Now, uh, in this hour, I'm going to introduce you to somebody who is a journalist who has uh, a book that he wrote several years ago uh, that uh, had a great deal of success, but you haven't seen it. You haven't seen the book. And the reason you haven't seen the book is because of the content of the book. Now, if you look at the book, it doesn't look very threatening. It looks very friendly. And it is. But there are people who think this book has a dangerous message. Now, I not only don't think that the book has a dangerous message, I agree with the message in the book. I agree with it. But amazingly, in the United States, not one publisher has decided to take on this book that's been very popular in Europe. It's amazing to me. We're going to find out this hour whether you agree. I, I think this book should be available in the United States, and then people uh, should make their own decision. You know, we think we have such a, a free country, you know. We think we have, uh, you know, every movie, every CD, every DVD. But, you know, we are prudes in certain ways, and there are certain books and certain uh, publications that we just don't get to see. I mean, you turn on the TV, the news here is different. We see news stories. Are you kidding me? I was watching the news here, and they had all these stories about about Burma, all these demonstrations in Burma. I'm not sitting in Los Angeles right now, but I guarantee you that uh, Burma came on after the Phil Spector story. It came on after the O.J. Simpson saga. It came on after if Burma made the news at all. It's just the United States and Europe are different, and that will be illustrated here with my guest, Filippo Bartolotta. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Tom. Now, um, you told me about this book, and when you told me about it, it immediately made sense. Tell us about your book. Um, it's a book about wine, so nothing wrong with that. No. Uh, it's an illustrated book about wine. Yes. And again, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's a book about, it's an illustrated book about wine for children. For children? And uh, tell us uh, why that children would need a book like that. Uh, by the way, you should remember, if you're listening, I believe they do need this book. Well, why? Because uh, you don't want to wait your kid to get to 21 and then, you know, waiting 21 years, uh, uh, loading up th throughout those years to get to the first pub and, and drink as much as, as they can. They, they're going to get starving for alcohol, uh, whether you, you need to teach them. Gradually, you need to tell them how to drink. Uh, you need to tell them that they shouldn't drink too much. You need to tell them what, what it is, what is wine, what is, and wine is part of uh, our products. It's always been there for uh, centuries, for actually it's millennium. So uh, what you're saying then is that kids should be brought along slowly. Uh, and I know uh, from everything I've heard here in Europe that uh, wine is on the table at a very young age. Uh, when do kids start seeing wine? Very soon. That's the point, actually. If you, if you laid out on your table a loaf of bread, uh, some oil, pasta, and whatever, and a bottle of wine, uh, 
the kid, year after year, will see that bottle as part of a, you know, table. Uh, and that won't be as something uh, so uncommon and unusual for him to see it. But the point is that you have to fill that gap between adults and children. And the topic has to come out. It's like sex, you know. You should talk about it. Oh, we don't like talking about that in the <laughs> States either. Yeah, but... but now, but, we find out by doing. Or through dirty <laughs> magazines. <laughs> Well, it should seem, be the same again with wine. I mean, uh, uh, I, my grandfather taught me that. My f- parents taught me that. I'm doing the same with my, with my child. I mean, he's three and a half, of course, so he hasn't touched a, a drop yet. But uh, that's, you know, drop by drop. You learn how to uh, control things. I and mean, most Italians wouldn't uh, – it, drunkness is not accept, socially accepted in Italy. You know. And I, I have found that in other countries here too. Uh, Spain, I watched uh, a group of locals in a bar lecturing a bunch of Americans who were just sauced. I mean, they were just face these people, and and the Spaniards were going up and like wagging their finger and saying, "You don't do that here. You, you get out of here. You know, we don't want that. So we don't want this in our country." Yeah, same again. I mean, if you if you go in the streets of Florence, Rome, that you you'll see lots of teenagers, American teenagers, getting completely hammered. Uh, you know, pubs and, uh, and bars. Uh, it, even, even here in Great Britain, it's much easier to, uh, drunkness is more socially accepted. You can get hammered with your boss, with everyone. People would, uh, just accept it. They, after you're there back at work, uh, you know, in Italy, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't make yourself seem drunk by, by your boss, not in the slightest. So people need to show they can control themselves. So your book, uh, is it for children or is it for adults or both? I'd say it's for both. It says from 9 to 99. Uh, point is that wine can be a very boring subject. I mean, uh, recently, any book about wine is very serious. And wine is one of the most, you know, pleasant and enjoyable products uh, that man has ever invented. So uh, it was a few years that I wanted to just uh, publish something more colorful, laid back. And uh, as, you know, my, my, the first word that my son said was uh, wine. You know, seeing lots of bottles coming in the house. I taste 6,000 wines a year. So I said, you know, I, I, there's got to be a way out there to uh, tell him what we do. Why does he see a bottle of wine at lunch, at dinner every day. You know, you must wonder what, what that is about. And um, so that's what the book is about. In your view, how young should a kid be when he, uh, uh, when he first sees wine in a glass meant for him? Whether it's watered down or small quantity? How, how old would be the youngest age? Oh God, I mean, a watered down uh, could be from a drop with water, uh, People start at a different age. I mean, I think 15, 14, 15 years of age, I think is a, is a very good age to start drinking is when, you know, 14 years old, 15 years old is when you start dating. You know, you, you want to know a f- few things out there. And, and same is with, with wine. There's nothing wrong, uh, to make such a subject familiar. Uh, you know, if you, if you drink at home with your parents, uh, you're not going to hammer, get hammered in front of them. And therefore, you just learn how to do it. And when you, when you, uh, respect something, you don't, you do not abuse it. That's the way I feel about it. And if the prohibition is the, you know, the, the, you don't want to prohibit things. I mean, we've, we've seen what happened in, in the 1920s, 1930s with prohibition in the States. People kept drinking, maybe even more. So prohibition is not going to help. Same again with sex, you know, and, and HIV. Uh, maybe, maybe if you don't do it, you're not going to get it. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about uh, the process. Uh, you bring kids along slowly. You uh, treat them as adults in that you uh, explain what it's all about, but uh, wine is, have the benefits of it, the dangers of abusing it, uh, uh, what have you. And uh, it certainly, in in uh, I spent seven weeks in Europe uh, since July first. I can tell you that uh, uh, when I've been in bars and pubs and restaurants, I don't see uh, teenagers abusing alcohol. I just don't see it. I was recently in Biarritz, France, and saw a bunch of uh, mid to late teens running around on the beach at two thirty a.m. And you would think if if you if I saw that in uh, Manhattan Beach 
if I saw that in uh, 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 Hermosa Beach or Redondo Beach or Huntington Beach, I would immediately suspect that those kids have got uh, tequila or they've got uh, wine coolers or they've got something. Uh, these kids at 2.30 a.m. on the beach in Biarritz, France, they had a big bottle of Coca-Cola. <laughs> that was th- that was their vice. So I, I, I really think there's something to what you're saying. But yet, in the United States, when you say, you know, I've got a book here and it teaches children how to drink, uh, people are going to get upset about that. And you found this yourself, didn't you? you? Didn't you attempt to find a publisher in the states for this book? Yeah, the, the point. The point is, is that it is a, a touchy subject. You know, alcohol. It's a major problem. Uh, it is in the states. It is in Europe. It's getting worse and worse, even in Europe. Uh, even in Italy and France and Spain, uh, all these Mediterranean countries that usually they, they used not to have problems with uh, youngsters and alcohol, now they're facing the problems. Uh, uh, most of the time, these, these, these children just go uh, drinking uh, spirits or cocktails, not wine. Uh, but still, there is a problem out there that need, needs to be addressed. And everyone is working around it uh, through different labeling, trying to word out p- people and everything. But if you don't start educating people, how can you expect them to be treated like adults? You know, like children should be educated gradually into... Uh, something that is part of life. Like, as we said, sex, uh, wine has been part of our civilization for over 8,000 years. Uh, we celebrate life with a glass of wine. Uh, wine has always been there to uh, make drink safe. You know, water wasn't a safe thing to drink in, 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 in the past. Um, that is why, actually, when the British went over to, to Australia, uh, most of the uh, during the treat, people were dying off. And the cure to that was wine with a drop of lime. pH three and a half was killing every disease off. So, you know, there is, and, and I'm sure people have heard of the French paradox in the States, Tom. Do you oh, think? Oh, of course we've heard of it. In fact, there have been some best selling books. There was one book written by a French expatriate called French Women Don't Get Fat. And it talked about uh, not only the French paradox, but the, you know when you go to France, you don't see these big tubs of lard like you see uh, in Atlanta and Dallas and uh, Disneyland and uh, all over the states. I mean, people are just huge, absolutely huge, and and it is true. French women don't get fat, and why? They do eat all that rich food, but they eat the foie gras the size of a caramel. <laughs> and then they're done. They're, they're not eating these huge portions of you know, a pound and a half of pasta or the old you can eat pasta bowl or whatever. I mean, they're not doing that. Appreciation of, of flavors, of different flavors yes. as well. It's a, like there is a uh, pig breed in, in Italy. It's called the Cinta Senese, for instance. You, you uh, told me you had some of that in Tuscany. Yes. Uh, actually, that pork has got omega-3 fats. What I'm trying to say here is that quality food, quality wine, quality everything in good quantities is actually good for you. And even uh, lard, when it comes from good animals, you know, contains minerals and, and, and uh, good fats for yourself. So it's just a matter of picking the good things. And, but you have to educate again. You have to educate children to uh, appreciate different flavors, appreciate a taste for life. And that's how then they will develop their own taste and they know what they're doing and they won't abuse it because they would want to have more high quality food if you teach them how to cook for instance as well how can you expect children to uh, have a better diet if they don't even know uh, the adults how to cook an egg it's the same issue it's just education that's all a, all a, a, that's why I've, I've written the book to fill that gap between children and parents and you asked me before is it for children or is it for parents uh, i didn't want to write anything patronizing so if if i had written an easy book about wine for adults Adults would have felt like, uh, what is this about? Well, this is for children, okay. But then you can learn how wine is made, what is wine, fermentation of the grapes into alcohol. Uh, there is a calendar of the farmer in there. Uh, you can learn all sorts of things. You can learn also how to use your senses. We've lost our... Uh, we don't know anymore how to use our senses of mouth, for instance. If you ask anyone with a, you know, with a... Uh, blindfold to recognize aromas, they wouldn't, they wouldn't get them. No. 
We'll take a break. We will come back. Our guest is wine journalist Filippo Bartolotta, and um, he wrote a book that you can't see, can't read, uh, because it suggests, oh, my God, it suggests that we teach children how to drink. Is there a problem with that? Tom, Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Why is it so hard to get a point across, man? Because you're an idiot. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from London. At 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Our guest wine journalist, Filippo Bartolotta. And, uh, by the way, we didn't tell you, the name of your book is what? It's Tira Bouchot. Tira Bouchot in French means uh, corkscrew. There we go. Shouldn't kids uh, be able to learn about uh, drinking alcohol? Shouldn't kids be able to learn that? Wouldn't it make more sense than the system we have now? Let's go to Angela on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes, hi, how are you? Great. Good. Well, I'm I'm from I was originally born in Barcelona and I lived in Madrid for until I was like 12 years old. And um it was very natural to have wine obviously at the dinner table and at parties and my mom would cook with wine and I would even taste the wine sometimes just like a little sip to see how it would taste. My parents wouldn't mind. And of course, I didn't like the taste of it back then. And it was just very natural, uh, just as, for example, Russian people, they sip vodka with their meal. And I've never really seen anybody get wasted over there, or they don't get drunk. You've never seen a Russian get wasted? Really? No, 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 not me. I I'm talking about growing up in Spain. Oh, okay. Um, I just never seen people get wasted or anything like that. It just seems just it's because of the culture, so... I don't uh, I don't disagree with this book at all, but I don't think American people would understand it because it's not in their culture. Yeah, well, what's in our culture, unfortunately, is binge drinking, drunk driving, right. uh, and and other wonderful things that we have. Exactly. Kids getting knocked up at thirteen because they were soused after opening their dad's liquor cabinet. Right. I, right. I, I'm 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 doing this show because I think uh, there's another way to go. Maybe we should try right. another way. And now at 24 years old, I went through high school here, and you won't even believe how many of my friends call themselves and have gone to rehab because they're alcoholics, and it just seems so unheard of to me, being a teenager already having these sort of problems and having to go to rehab because of alcoholism, and it's very strange. I mean, maybe because in my house it was very open. Uh, I don't know, or it's just not in my genes to feel like that, but... Now, Angela, I was in I was in Spain two years ago, yeah. and um, I believe the drinking age for beer is fifteen. Right, exactly. You can go to a restaurant, or a baby can sit at a bar. And I, to this day, I still don't understand why, uh, if you're under twenty one or whatever, you can't sit at a bar and have dinner or just watch somebody else have a drink. It's all very strange. Oh, you're going to get sued, or you're going to lose your license, or yeah. Like, what if you're twenty? What if you're twenty and your boyfriend is twenty-one? Right, you can't sit at the bar. It's illegal. I mean, it's unbelievable. It doesn't make any sense. I think it's absurd. Yeah. And I, I went, you know, twelve years old, eleven years old. I could go to a restaurant and you know watch my parents have wine, and it wouldn't be a problem. And, and if you, if you had kids, if you had kids, kids, would you raise them the same way? Oh, absolutely, of course. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, it's the way to go. I mean, maybe too many restrictions, too many laws. It could backfire on you, and I don't know. It's different over here with young people and alcohol. It's all about getting wasted. It's not. Can about you can you believe? Drinking. Can you believe Filippo has not been able to get his book published in the United States? No, it doesn't surprise me. Of course not. Because uh, American people just wouldn't understand, in my opinion, unless you're American and you know about you know, other cultures, and you know a world map, and you know what's going on with languages, and, you know, what goes on in different cultures. It's really important to know, not just to know about what's going on in America. We need to be more open-minded. It's, it's, it's interesting to, to notice also uh, how the those countries with the strongest prohibition laws uh -huh. uh, on alcohol are actually the countries that are suffering right. the most of alcohol abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, America, uh, Northern Europe. There are even countries in Northern Europe like uh, 
Sweden, where the state would control the amount of alcohol get, that gets into the country. Right. And that's, you know, and, and then, and, and then if you go there, you see people getting quite, you know, hammered, hammered down there. <laughs> yeah. So, so prohibition, I don't think is never the right way forward. You know, taboos are the avenue for abuse and, uh, so that's that's the way I feel, and and I and I wish you know Americans uh, could could see could see the this problem that way. To may, maybe the children would start uh, dealing with uh, with alcohol uh, differently. Thank you for the call, Angela. Let's go to John on the Tom Likas show for our guest, Filippo Bartolotta. Hello. Hey, John. I uh, I mean Tom. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing all right. Listen, I got two things to say, uh, Tom. I listen to your show all the time. I agree with most of the stuff you said. But uh, first first thing, I can't believe this liberal a-hole wants to come over here with his, with his dumb ideas. Tell him to, if, if he sold it over there, tell him to keep it over there. Second of all... Wait, wait, wait. You before, was, you get, before you get to part two, why right? do you say that? Because there's a reason why he hasn't gotten his book published, Tom. I mean, it just doesn't go with the culture here. You want you want, you want to bring your ideas here, you know, just keep them over there. If he's selling over there, if he's doing good over there. But I thought we were a country of freedom. I thought uh, you should be able to to see the ideas of just about anybody and everybody because we're we're free, right? Right, but then why is he nobody publishing his book? Because they know it's not going to hit. Right. I I think the book would be a big hit. I I really do. I I well, don't see what the problem is. Well, Tom, they're not taking me to my second idea. You don't like kids yourself, right? You, you've said no, no, yourself. I've you, never, you, I've never, no, never you are kid. wrong, you are wrong. I have never said I don't like kids. I love kids. I you don't never have, have kids. kids. For you, of your own, right? Because, not because I don't love them, because I do. Well, then, Tom, look, don't be a hypocrite and try to give us advice on how to raise our kids when you don't want none of I'm not, I, you know what? It has nothing to do with, uh, uh giving you yes, advice you on how to raise kids. No. I, I have to live, I have to live, I have to live in a country, uh, with the, uh, results of the way we're doing it now. Uh, anytime I get in my car, one of these kids who knows nothing about alcohol, 16, 17, some kid coming from the prom, could crash into my car, We've got drunk driving, we've got DUIs, we've got kids getting killed, we've got binge drinking in our country. I have to live with that. And that is why I'm suggesting that maybe we could do it a different way. And you know what? I'm not suggesting we make it a law, that we enforce it. I'm suggesting that we allow all ideas to come in. And and one idea is, how about you teach kids about alcohol from a young age? Right, but... Tom, take me to my point again. You don't have kids yourself. Don't tell us. So you are pro kids. ignorance, is that right? You have so them. you you believe don't in ignorance? Are you, are you are you are you pro ignorance? Is that what you are? Are you are you pro ignorance? I'm asking you. Are you pro ignorance? Are you in favor of ignorance? No, I'm not. But this is not. time in this so what, time in an age when what, you know what, what, what age is that? What, what age books. would that be? What age would that be? What age would that be? When when they can understand what alcohols what drugs are, you know, when? 14, what age 15, is that? something like that. I don't know. To myself, it would be like somewhere around 15, 14. When but, you that, that's what school. he said. Were you listening? <laughs> Were you listening earlier? In America, oh, you cannot talking. drink. You cannot can drink after the age of 21. Thing? We're going to be about how, teach your kid how to use drugs. Give me a break, dude. Don't be a hypocrite. Thank no, you. No, drugs are not drugs are not legal. We're talking about alcohol, which is illegal. So, oh, he hung up. Coward. Coward. Unbelievable. You see, ignorance. That's exactly the point. You know, I just said I said fifteen. Uh, maybe I could even go lower than that. And he said fourteen. Uh, so, and he's twenty-one. In Europe, he's eighteen. In some of those countries in Europe, uh, uh, but having Children, teenagers, waiting up to 21 means calling for troubles, having l people lining up till they're, you know, in order to get as many drinks as possible once they get 21. So, um, and that's, and I, again, I say what I said again uh, b before, the fact that most countries with the most, the highest prohibition laws are the countries that are suffering the most with alcohol abuse. Well, I also think that when you make laws against any vice or you put age limits on this stuff, it just makes it more interesting to kids. Uh, a good example is casinos. Look around this town. Look around Madrid. Look around Barcelona. There are casinos. There are casinos right here in, in Piccadilly Circus. I, I, I was seeing casinos. Uh, you can walk in. Uh, there's a pub over here that's got four gambling machines right in the pub. Uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, but who was playing those games? 
Nobody. The casino I saw at Piccadilly Circus, Friday night, packed with people. How many people were in there? Two. That's it. When, when this stuff is readily available, people don't care about it anymore. People are fascinated in the States with gambling because we have to go to Las Vegas and it's illegal. And it's the same thing with drinking. When you tell people they can't drink until 21, not only are they going to drink, uh, these laws are preposterous. Everybody out there who's under 21 who wants to drink is drinking today. Everybody, 100% of everybody. They're making these laws is just a way for the government to send, make, it, make it sound like they're doing something about a problem. But but in, in fact, they're making the problem worse by forcing people to break the law, become criminals, get fake IDs. And then they go out there and they drive their cars and they crash into other law-abiding citizens. It, it just doesn't make any sense. I wouldn't want people to think, you know, that children should be left alone with, with alcohol, not in the slightest. I'm saying completely the opposite. Educating bit by bit, let them know what, what it is. Alcohol is poison. It's a ma- ma- matter of quantity though. Alcohol can, could, wine actually could be good. Uh, the French paradox, the fact that you have antioxidants in it. And if you drink up to four units a day, Four, three, four glasses a day throughout meals. That's the other point. Uh, if you eat, if you drink throughout meals, your body will be able to accept it better. And, uh, and the antioxidant will help you slow down the Alzheimer benefit. You'll be benefiting from, uh, against, you know, like uh, cholesterol or heart. Uh, related disease and everything. Yeah, less likely to have a stroke, less likely to have high blood pressure, less likely to have a heart attack, uh, less likely to have hardening of the arteries. Uh, there are so many diseases that are prevented uh, by red wine. Uh, also, certain kinds of cancer uh, are reduced as a result of the fact that all that fat, all that cholesterol gets washed out of your body. I mean, uh, there are so many benefits. And uh, in the United States, we're not even allowed to tell you what the benefits are on a wine label. Uh, even when the government itself releases a report saying wine does all these wonderful things. Uh, when winemakers have wanted to put that information on the label, the government says no, no, because people might start drinking wine, and then what would happen? It, it's outrageous. We'll take a break. We will come back with Filippo Bartolotta. Uh, he's written a book that you can't read in the United States because it uh, talks about teaching your kids how to drink alcohol. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Hey, keep quiet. I'm on the radio. That's right. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from London, England. Thank you for tuning in. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We are joined this hour by wine journalist Filippo Bartolotta. And uh, he uh, wrote a book that uh, people have seen in Europe and have raved about, but you can't see it in the United States because it's a book for parents and kids. It's about teaching your kids how to drink alcohol. It's all of that. Oliver on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. This is Oliver. Hi. Yes, so, uh, I know I just said that. All right, thank you. Great, uh, great subject. I just, uh, I'm personally from Switzerland originally, and I live in LA for eight years now. And what I see, it seems to be a, a moderation problem Americans have, if it's with food or drinking or no matter what it is. You know, I mean, I grew up with uh, wine on the table as well. My mom was cooking with wine, and you taste it in the food every once in a while. But um, it's, it's not a, it's not something bad, you know. And here you see. 16 year olds driving big, big old trucks and it's legal and over, over, but you know, alcohol is a bad thing. You know, it's just, uh, I don't understand it. You know, you have to be 18 years old in, in Europe to drive a vehicle. Over here, you have to be 16, but no, you can't drink till you're 21. You know, it, it, it's, I don't know, it's just moderation and, uh, and, uh, subjects don't, don't, they don't match. You know what I mean? Well, I I agree with you. I uh, I do believe that uh, that goes back to our uh, Puritan past in the United States. Um, you know, we were founded by the Pilgrims, and they were Puritans, and that was their deal. You know, uh, to, to try to uh, uh, suppress literature and suppress anything that would resemble a vice, and that would make it go away. Well, you see how successful they've been at that. So the result is that we have a country. We have these conversations on the radio with women all the time who say. 
you know, they, 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 they have had sex with everybody in their high school, then everybody in their college. Then when they get pregnant, they go, Ooh, I don't believe in abortion. It's wrong. It's wrong. So it's like, wait a minute. You've had sex with everybody that you've ever known. But now that you've gotten pregnant, you somehow have developed this morality. I don't understand. Right. And, and right. that really describes Americans about so many things, you know. Oh, drinking is so, we, we got to put rules and laws and labels on alcohol and warn people of the dangers of alcohol. We drink, we booze more than anybody. Right. I mean, we are the biggest boozers in the world. And we are also the biggest eaters in the world, while we're also the biggest dieters in the world. I mean, we're insane like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, nowhere in the world uh, they sell that many fat burners, as an example, as in America. You know, uh, all those... Well, that's because there's fat no burgers. fat burgers in other countries. I, you know, I'll tell you what, Gary, if there was a fat burger here in London, we'd be there tonight. <laughs> well, you know, I just want to want to say that I think it's top, top notch is the moderation and... Uh, I, you know, it, it sickens me when I go in the store to buy groceries to make, you know, to to cook cook a meal, and I see moms in front of me with three kids, and all they put on a um, on, on the table is is box food, you know, instead of f f cooking fresh meals. You know, women. Uh, a lot I think we'd be a lot. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. I think we'd be a whole lot better off in Los Angeles for the bars were open 24 hours a day and Home Depot closed at 10, rather than the other way around. I do. Susan on the Tom Like is show. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, hi, Tom. I just wanted to um, to call and say I, I totally agree with this topic. I totally agree with this book uh, you. that you're putting out. I think um, in well, America. I'm not, putting, have... I'm not putting out. It's Filippo's book. I'm just talking about it. <laughs> okay, you're right. I'm sorry, Filippo. Your book is, uh, is I think, a great idea. Um, I wish it was available here in America because I think education, especially, especially with things so um, easily abused as alcohol or sex, um, education is something we should not be afraid of. I, I lived in Italy for, for three months uh, when I was 20. And when I returned to the United States, I had two weeks before I could turn 21. And I was so used to drinking wine in restaurants uh, for every afternoon <laughs> meal that when I came out here, having to wait two magical weeks before I could do that again just seemed so absurd. Um, it, it seemed so arbitrary. And yeah, I, I see so much abuse here with that. Yeah, I, I agree with you, actually. Wine, wine and sex are two topics that we... Uh, parents like prefer to skip it rather than to teach. I mean, we nobody tell us what to do with those two topics. I mean, we don't bore. We you know we don't have a manual of instructions on on how to do certain things. And if you learn bit by bit, year after year, uh, what is sex about, what is wine about, when you get there, maybe you feel more confident. You feel like it's natural, right. just it's mystery, natural. Right? It takes the mystery away, it takes the taboo away, and it doesn't make it something that is so um, almost glamorous, almost something that they feel that is uh, that they need to keep secret and, and almost makes it worth it, something you can enjoy irresponsibly. So I think your book, if you get it published in America, would actually be a great thing. I think more parents need to not be afraid of teaching their kids things that they're going to have to face when they're adults. Susan, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Christian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello? Tom, how are you doing, Professor? Great. Listen, I really appreciate this topic. Filippo, thank you for coming on the air. Uh, this is thank a very you, important, yeah, this is a very important uh, subject. It's a bit of my experience alone. Uh, listen, I was, uh, especially because of that ignorant caller who called, I think, two, uh, two times ago. His name's John. If he's listening, I want you to listen up, John. Uh, I was raised in a border town in Texas called El Paso, right by uh, Juarez, Mexico, where I was able to cross over at the age of 14 and 15 and just business train. <laughs> And uh, which I would do with me and my American or Latino American friends, and we do that constantly. And uh, I'm, I'm talking, you know, ke keg stands, beer bongs, and we would just get completely wasted. And that was the point. The point of alcohol was to get drunk. And at the, uh, my parents saw this pattern uh, subtly, you know, because I kind of hid it from them. But at the age of 16, uh, my parents, who were are big winos and have a strong Spanish background, started getting me into wine. It started with light, you know, pinots. <laughs> uh, with you know a glass with the with the with the meal, and then it turned into merlots, and then that went on to you know blends and syrahs and cabernets, and I grew over the years uh, to really really love and appreciate the art of wine and the tasting of wine. I traveled with them to Napa, it's kind of Barbara. I went, I went to Italy and Spain, and it, and, and yeah, now I'm about 21 travel. years old, uh, 21 year old college graduate, and I can tell you that if I if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for their subtle you know. Uh, teaching of that, teaching. Of, of the education. Culture, that your book, 
that your book is, is trying to show us, I, mean, I would be a drunk before the age of 21. Well, yeah, good, good point about traveling, actually. This book, think about all those Americans that travel over to Europe, to Italy, on a wine tour, on a gourmet holiday, and they have children with them. Children... Mm-hmm. You know, what do they, what are they gonna do? They could read my book. While their parents are drinking wine, they could read my book and they have fun, they can learn, they can see the big tanks when they know what's happening. Maybe they could actually teach their parents to say, look, those grapes are just filled with sugars and the yeast are just gonna transform the sugars into alcohol and, and CO2. You know, and, and that's Absolutely. about culture. That's just it's about a, culture. A- it's a big culture and fundamental difference between the United States and Europe. And uh, if I may continue, I, I made a documentary, as a matter of fact, two years ago on underage drinking. And I uh, uh, interviewed, uh, you know, officials, psychologists, students and parents alike. And I found out that really, I mean, it's such a difference culturally because the average American kid uh, drinks to get drunk while the average European drinks as a delicacy or as a as, as just socially. But and, uh, the point, point is, that this is changing in Europe as well, actually, Christian. That's the point. That's one of the other points why I've written this book because uh, in the past, uh, the, in the Mediterranean countries, this wasn't a problem. Alcohol wasn't a problem. It is becoming more and more of a problem. The children are getting, uh, they, they get drank on in a, a younger age oh, every year. And so that's because parents are not sharing meals with the children Absolutely. any longer they don't put the uh, you know the wine at the table they don't talk to them so the w- meal times and maybe are some few of those times of the day where you can talk to your children and and uh, that that's it, it, it is very important that's not happening anymore oh it's extremely important and it changed my life thanks to my parents you know and and Tom got it right before and so have you that it, it's really a taboo in this country I mean when I interviewed students uh, and people my own age in my documentary they, they all said the same thing they said why is it fair it isn't fair you know we could go to war and get killed at 18 but we can't have a beer yeah. in Europe they drink and they could drink all they want it's not fair it's not fair boo hoo you know the reason is that because we put such restriction and have made it a taboo and don't talk about it that we have these drunk people, you know, these kids who just get drunk and get behind the wheel or become alcoholics before they even turn 21. And uh, interest, another interesting point I'd like to quickly throw in is that one of the psychologists that I had spoken to said, you know, when we raised the, when the United States raised the drinking at level to 21, uh, there was a significant decrease in drunk driving. Um, but he believes that it's the reason it's still such a huge problem in the United States as opposed to Europe is because of this taboo. And he said that the only way, if he was God and he could want, you know, wave a magic wand and change everything, is to raise the driving age and lower the drinking age in the United States. And that will never happen. But I, th- I thought that that was an amazing point, which, you know, is unfortunate. And, and, you know, I think all in all, it's just a fundamental and cultural difference that I hope John, the, oh, the last caller from two or three times ago, really understands and, and finds out. And I really thank you. Filippo, I, I really look forward to your book. Hopefully it gets, you know, distribution or whatever here in the United States. And Tom, thank you for having him on the show. Thank Mr. you, Chris. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Uh, Andy, on the Tom Likas show for Filippo Bartolotta. Hello. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Oh, you're John. Go ahead, John. Yeah, how you doing, man? Hey, it's the first time I call you. I've been listening to you for a long time, you know. But, yeah. um, you know, like I said, Tom, I, um, you know, I've been in the country 26 years you now, and uh, I came from Vietnam. I came here when I was nine. And it seemed like, you know, every year, you know, no matter what kind of education uh, we do to, you know, the kid, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. You know, um, I, well, you know, a lot of what we call education is really just, uh, you know, uh, uh, telling kids they can't do this, they can't do that, making rules. It's rebuilding. Keep- yeah, we, we're, we're keeping kids ignorant. I mean, that, that's what we do, unfortunately. And, uh, I just don't think it's working. I mean, I think Filippo's approach is a good one. Um, now, Andy, one of our callers that we don't have time for, wants to know, can he get your book? Andy. Andy, he, we, we have no time to put him on, but can we, can he get your book if he wants to? Yeah, I, 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 bet, I bet I could. I'll, I'll be, I'll be having to translate in there in English. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm about to do it because, uh, I don't have a publisher yet, but I'm translating it in English. Uh, these days, so if you can read Italian, I can send him a copy. All right, hang on. We'll get to Andy. Filippo, thank you so much for coming in. Pleasure. The Tom Likas Show.